In your reading, you learned that a proposition is some sort of a complete sentence that makes a claim that's either true or false. One of the things that's helpful in making truth tables for propositions is to uh, look at the number of propositions and use that as a clue to decide how many rows the truth table will have. Right, so we had multiple types of propositions that were discussed, so we can, we can categorize these. And if we look at simple negations, uh, often we're looking at just a single proposition. Right, so something like the statement, it is winter, and we can call that P. And then it's, it's just a single statement, so it, it's either true or false. That was the definition of proposition. So when you make a, a truth table for P, right, well, there's really only two options. It's true or false. Okay. Now, if we wanted to look at the negation of that, right, so maybe we're given it is winter, and then we want to make a truth table for it is not winter, right, well, there are only two options for that. Okay, it's still just a single statement. It's either true or false, right? So a truth table would look like this. You might have the statement P, right? It is winter, and that's true or false. And then you have the statement not P, it is not winter, right? Well, if it is winter, then it is not winter is false. And if it's, uh, if it is winter is false, then it must be true that it is not winter. All right, so notice two rows here, there's only two possibilities for that statement. Right? It is not winter is either false or true. Now these other three types of propositions that were discussed, okay, conjunctions, disjunctions, conditionals, uh, all of these were actually combinations of propositions. So sometimes we call these compound statements or compound propositions. Right? So these are put together with uh, connecting words. Right? So conjunctions are put together with the word and. Disjunctions combine two or more propositions with the word or. And conditionals use that if-then format. Okay? If one proposition, then another proposition. So since we're combining multiple propositions, there are more possibilities for uh, whether the overall statement could be true or false. So for example, let's look at a conjunction. Let's say we have P and Q. All right, well, is how many rows would we have in a truth table? What are all of the possibilities here? All right, well, we know that P could be true or false. And whatever the statement Q is could also be true or false. All right, so it's, uh, it's tempting perhaps to think that there might just be two rows, true or false. Right, but look at all the ways that we could combine those things. Right, so we could have a statement that's either uh, maybe the first part is true and the second part is also true. The first part could be true, but the second part could be false. Right, the first part could be false and the second part could be true. Or the first and second parts could both be false. So there are actually four different ways for, uh, for this overall statement P and Q to be true or false. Okay, and then these are all the possibilities. So typically a good idea for how to make sure you don't miss any uh, is to start with the convention um, true before false and then go from there. Okay, so another way to show this would be uh, let's start with, with P as true and then think about the different options for Q. All right, so the second statement then could be true or it could be false. All right, and then if P is false, then Q could either be true or false. So I'm saying the same thing. I'm just writing it a little bit differently with these arrows here. Right? And you can kind of see from here, we've got four different options. Right? We have true, 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 false, false, true, or false, false. Okay, let's look at a disjunction. And perhaps now we have one that has three different statements. So let's say this is P or Q or R. Well, now how many rows would we have in a truth table? All right, well, let's, let's use that convention true before false and then list out all of the options. Okay, so if P is true, then what are the options for Q? Well, Q could either be true or false. All right. And then in either of those cases, what are the options for R? Well, R could also be true or false. 
right? And I'm going to do that again because I have another option, right? So uh, what I'm saying with this, these first two, true and false here, is in the situation where P is true and Q is true, then R could be either true or false. But it's also true that if P is true and Q is false, uh, that doesn't affect R. Okay, that's a different statement. R could still be either true or false. What about in backing up to where um, instead of P being true, what if P is false? Okay, well that still doesn't affect Q. We still have the same two options. Q is either true or false. And then what about R? All right, so if P is false and Q is true, that doesn't affect R. It could still be true or false. And then if P is false and Q is false, R could still be true or false. So if you count these different options at the end, you'll see that we actually now have eight different options, right? And instead of writing it like this with these arrows, um, you can see that a truth table just uses straight rows instead, right? So the first row would be true, true, true. The second row would be true, true, false. Next row would be true, false, true. Next row would be true, false, false. And then we would continue on like that, so we would end up with eight different rows. All right? So that's why you'll see um, in truth tables, you're going to see this first true for P repeated four times. And that's because we need to, to carry that over and look at the two different options for Q and carry that all the way over to four different options for R. All right? But what you'll notice, even though you see a little bit of repetition with the trues and falses, um, all of your, your eight different rows, they're all going to be unique. So you're not going to have any row that's completely repeated. So we'll only see true, true, true once. Okay, so this is very technical, um, but keep in mind that, that P, Q, and R do represent actual statements in words. So we're just using P, Q, and R because it's shorter, more concise for making a table, um, but this would have application with, with actual sentences. So I think you can see examples of that in your reading. What I wanted to do here is, is talk a little bit more about the technical uh, aspects of making a truth table since that can sometimes be a, a tricky aspect of this. All right, so let's do another example. What if we wanted to make a truth table for P or not Q and R? So this actually has um, a conjunction aspect, I'm sorry, a disjunction aspect to it as well as a conjunction. And we actually have a negation word in here too. All right, so we're throwing everything in all at once. And it's helpful to know what order to do this in. So here's the, the typical way you would do this. You would go through and look for all of the different propositions. So we have three of them, P, Q, and R. And then on top of that, we've got, you know, an extra complication with a negation. All right. So we would make columns for P, Q, and R first. And then we would go back and make columns for any of the negations. So I have a not Q. Okay. And then I would start putting things in order from left to right. All right. So reading this left to right, I would do the or first and then the and. All right. So the next thing I would do is, is think about um, the truth values for P or not Q. And I'm just going to write this vertically to save a little bit of space. Right? And then I would do the end next. So at this point I would know whether P or not Q is true or false. And then I can combine that with R right, and see if that's true or false. Okay, so we start with the different possibilities for P, Q, and R. Right? And uh, based on the work that we just did, we know what, what all the combinations should be. All right, so I'm my first row would be true, 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 right? and then it would be true, true, false, and then true, false, true, and true, false, false. Okay, so that's these, these four options. And then I'm going to do the next four where P is false and Q and R follow the same, same order. So that would be P is false, and Q is true and R is true, or it could be false, true, false. I should write a little smaller here. Okay, and false, 
false, true, false, false, false. All right, and so if you're looking for patterns here, an easy way to, to notice this, we've got four trues followed by four falses for P. Okay, and then Q alternates between two true and two false. And R alternates between true, false, true, false. And that's just happening because, again, we followed the convention of always putting true before false, and then just looking at the different options for each proposition. Okay, so now let's look at the statement not Q. So you learned that the negation of a statement always makes the opposite claim of a statement, and so its truth value is always going to be opposite whatever that proposition was. All right, so in this first row, if R is, or I'm sorry, if Q is true, well, then not Q would make the opposite claim, so that's going to be false. All right, so anytime Q is true, not Q will be false. And anytime Q is false, then not Q will be true. All right, so we end up with alternating true trues and false falses again. Okay, next let's look at an or statement or a disjunction. All right, so what would be the truth value for P or not Q? Well, in your reading, you uh, hopefully picked up on that inclusive meaning of the word or, right? So we know that an or statement uh, is inclusive in logic, right? Meaning it's true whenever one thing or the other is true or both. So the only time an or statement is false is if both pieces are false, okay? So like if I say, uh, in my fridge, I have apples or oranges, okay? Or, or if I just say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure I've got some apples or oranges in the house, okay? It's considered true if I have just apples, true if I have just oranges, and also true if I have both of them, right? So it is inclusive. So for P or not Q, we wanna focus on P and its truth values and the statement not Q, right? And then look at what happens if we combine those two together. All right, so if we have a, a statement that's true or false, well, we just needed one piece, one of those propositions, P or not Q, to be true. And P is true, so that makes this overall disjunction statement true. Okay, yeah, and it's the same in the second row. Okay, true, false. So one of those propositions, P, is true. So that statement is true, okay? And then because this is an inclusive statement, if both pieces P and not Q are true, then the overall statement is also true. Okay, what about if both are false? So if I say I have apples or oranges and I actually don't have either, that's the only case where this statement is false. And we see that one show up twice. Okay, and then again, if, if P is false but, Q, uh, but not Q is true, then this uh, statement is true, it's not a lie. Okay, one piece is true, so that's true. Okay, so that's how you would do the, the statement uh, P or not Q. And then finally, we want to look at uh, P or not Q and R. So now we're looking at a conjunction here and we're combining P or not Q. So let me get rid of uh, this. So we want, we want to focus on a different, a different column here. Okay, so we want to take a look at the statement P or not Q, and that's this one. Okay, and the statement R, and that's this one. Okay, so and statements, it doesn't matter what order you read these, but technically it would be uh, the P or not Q first. All right, so like this first row is true and true, and the second row would be read true and false. So what is the logic for an and statement? Well, you learned that uh, a conjunction is true only if P and Q are both true. So if I say I have apples and oranges, that's only a true statement if I do have both of those two things. All right, so if P or not Q and R are both true, then this overall conjunction statement is true. Otherwise, it's false. So in the second case, if I have a true and a false, that's false. Okay, true and true in the third row is true. True and false in the fourth row is false. OK, 
Okay, and then any case here, false true, false false. I've got some falses involved. Okay, those are going to be, whoops, false. Okay, in the seventh row, I have true and true. So both pieces, both propositions are true, so that's true. And then this last one, true and false, is false. All right, and there you have it. You have a truth table for, for this overall statement with three different propositions, P or not Q and R. And this is just, again, just a really concise way to show all of the possibilities uh, for whether this statement is true or false. All right, so what we could do now is uh, look at maybe a real scenario. So let's say that the statement P is true, and let's say that not Q is also true, but R is false. And we want to know if this statement is, is a lie or true. All right, so all I would have to do now is go to the row that has true, true, false. So where P is true, and I've got four options. Okay, and I want to look at out of those at the one where not Q is true. So now I'm down to two options. And out of those two choices, I want to look at the one uh, where R is false. So backing up to R, okay, I've only got one row that fits that description. Okay, where P is true, not Q is true, and R is false. And then we can just follow that across to the last column and see that that would mean that statement is false. So these are useful, um, I would say, more in cases where you have longer statements like this that involve many different propositions and where it's a little bit hard to hear just from saying something out loud whether or not it's true or false.